And hello, everybody. Welcome to the Count of the Vlogcast, episode 38, with my guest, Jack Connor. How are you, Jack? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you very much for having me. So tell us about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a writer living in Austin, Texas. Uh, I've lived here uh, for a long time, and uh, I've traveled around and lived in various places, but I've always come back to Austin. Um, I love it. It's uh, the perfect blend of uh, uh, great music and, you know, good weather. It's a little warm, but it's a cool, cool town. So how long, how long are you writing for? I've been writing all my life. I started my first novel, believe it or not, when I was 11 years old. Uh, yeah, it happened because I was just learning about jobs and things. And I was like, you know, I don't want to get a job. How can I not have a job? I was like, eh, you know, my, my, my mom and dad are always reading books. I wonder if I could do something like that and not actually have to work for a living. So it took me many years to develop. Uh, but finally, uh, you know, about 10 years ago, I was able to quit working for, uh, quit my day job and just make my income writing. Wow. And that has been fantastic. So talk about that experience a little bit from um, like beginning to writing to professionalism. How did you like make that transition to like um, writing and writing and writing to becoming like professional, like published, published author? Well, uh, for a long time, I just wrote uh, by myself, for myself. Uh, but I realized you know, I couldn't get better in a vacuum. So I joined a writer's group and I let other writers see my work and give me feedback. And, you know, gradually over the years, I got better. Uh, I got an agent, a big time agent, the same guy that represents Brandon Sanderson and Charlene Harris uh, of True Blood. And uh, so I was in the uh, traditional publishing scene for about 10 years, uh, trying to get traditionally published and uh, after 10 years of that, I grew really impatient because uh, I knew that I could make money on the Kindle. Uh, if, I, if I went indie, I could, I could make money. And so my agent counseled me not to do that. So for another three years, I did nothing. And, uh, but I was missing the Kindle gold rush. And meanwhile, he still wasn't getting me published. Mm. So ultimately, I went indie and uh, it worked. Uh, and do, you know, I, uh, you know, I guess I've never looked back. I just, uh, I, I really enjoy what I do and I'm, I'm happy to be here. Okay. So after a decade plus of like, um, public, as a, as a, as a publisher, what, what was that moment like that you're like, oh, I got I just got to do it. So right now, like got to move to Kindle and like I had to make my own, <laughs> my own boss basically. Well, it was just, uh, you know, seeing all the, uh, the success that people were having with the Kindle. Uh, and uh, just, uh, you know, people were becoming overnight sensations, uh, and uh, it was just driving me crazy that I, I wasn't part of that, mm. um, and I, I really wanted to be, and, uh, you know, I wanted people to be talking about my books, and, uh, you know, not dreaming about the day when people would know uh, my books, and, uh, you know, if I had continued in the traditional publishing model, uh, maybe I would have eventually gotten published and maybe I would still be waiting. So, you know, I'll never know uh, which was the right decision, but I'm glad that I made the one that I did. Uh, so, uh, say la vie, I guess. That's great. Congratulations on that too. So talk a little about um, successes and accomplishments with the self-publishing that you've had um, like recently and when you, begin, when you like, first started like self-publishing. And you first sure. Really well, uh, successful. I had some initial uh, success, and then I learned what worked and what didn't, and how better to promote myself. And uh, it, it really worked uh, eventually. I mean, it took. I, I'm a slow learner. Mm. It took me a little while. I, I can relate. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but uh, but it worked at, at my peak. And, you know, I hope I have, you know, I can surpass this at some point. Uh, but at my peak, I was, uh, my author rank in, on Amazon was 323, mm -hmm. which means there were only 322 authors doing better than me, including Stephen King, all those other guys. Uh, you know, there was only that many people doing better than me. And so that was pretty cool. You know, I, I, I'm not at that level at the moment mm -hmm. but i but i am eager to get back to it and and that was that was pretty neat so with the self-publishing too being your own boss do you have to take care of like a lot of like um different um like um 
I want to say like business aspects. So like talk about a little bit of branding and promoting yourself. Like how did you, how did you go about that in marketing? Yeah. Uh, you know, that is uh, one of the things that I still struggle with and, uh, you know, I, I am not a natural marketer. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a hippy dippy writer, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm not a, a savvy business person. You know, uh, my dad was a good businessman. If he were around, he could steer me right. Um, but, that is something that I have had to learn. Uh, what works best for me does not necessarily work best for other people. And so when you're reading advice from people, uh, you know, and you try it and it doesn't work, you realize that maybe it worked for them because uh, they're writing, you know, romance or mysteries or, or, or whatever, that, you know, that particular advice may not work for you. So you just have to experiment. Uh, and, you know, I, I found that, uh, you know, free promotions work well, BookBub works well, uh, you know, advertising on Amazon and Facebook uh, can work well. And uh, I've had hit or misses with both of those. And, uh, but the uh, surest way is just to keep writing and make sure your books are professionally edited or proofread, that you have professional covers, uh, that they're fun hopefully and uh that people will want to buy your next book great uh, so talk a little about your genre and how you have this came about came into it well i write a, a range of genres i write horror science fiction uh, steampunk and epic fantasy uh sometimes all together i'm, I'm probably best known for my series called the atomic sea uh, which is a blend of genres, uh, steampunk, net fantasy, horror. Um, it's, uh, let me see, I've got the cover. I can show you right here. This will give you a little taste of the vibe of the novel. Uh, it's very atmospheric, but very adventurous. It's really a big, grand adventure novel. Um, but with a very unique setting, uh, in, in the world of the atomic sea, uh, the sea has gone bad. Something mysterious a thousand years before the story began happened and the sea became weird. If you eat or drink from the atomic sea, you will become mutated or die. Uh, and if you become mutated, you could become a fish person or a crab person, or, or you will have some aquatic element. Uh, and so gradually the world has been transformed and people have had to learn to deal with this crazy sea and not get mutated, ideally. Uh, and at the time the novel begins, there is a big world war going on. And uh, the technology level of this world is circa World War II or 1930s. And so there is a big world war going on. Our main character is Dr. Francis Avery, uh, who is a, a medical doctor aboard a whaling ship. And uh, from the mouth of a whale, a beautiful woman is drawn, untainted, unmutated by the sea. And she has a secret about how to defeat the evil empire that is making war on the world. And so that begins a, a grand adventure uh, spanning five volumes um, that is the Atomic Sea. Yeah. So um, did you go into that um, series and think it'd be a series or did you write one book and like all of a sudden like you got great feedback and you're like, all right, I have to be like five books. Did you do um, pre-plan this? Yeah, I, I originally intended it to be uh, two books. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then when I got to the end of the, the second book, I realized, wait a minute, that's, that's not the ending. There's, there's more to tell, you know? And uh, so I kept on going for another three books. And uh, then I wrote three spinoff books. Uh, so, and I, I might, I might go back to that universe. It, it's a world that I really love. It's a lot of fun. It's got, uh, you know, all sorts of crazy mad science, Frankenstein sort of, sort of science, uh, fish people, you know, elder gods, you know, other dimensional beings, you know, Zeppelins, a lot of Zeppelins and Dirigibles. Uh, so just a lot of fun to write and, and hopefully to read. 
So talk a little about your influences, like um, your favorite authors and like writers in general that you like um, not inspired to be like that, like influence you and like um, inspire you to keep writing or uh, have like influenced your writing. Sure. Well, I have a, a range of influences. I, I guess my uh, biggest influences are uh, J.R. Tolkien, you know, uh, George R. R. Martin, uh, Lovecraft, who is uh, very influential, especially in the Atomic Sea series because of the Elder Gods uh, nature of it, and uh, Robert E. Howard. Uh, love Robert E. Howard, creator of Conan and a fellow Texan. Uh, let's see, uh, r modern writers that I really enjoy, other than George R. R. Martin, or uh, Gordon Dahlquist, uh, Scott Lynch, uh, and there's there's a range of really good writers working today. Uh, anyway, yeah, th those are some of my top faves. Great. So, um, two part question. In terms of your writing process and like your audience, do you think of audience before you write when you're like thinking like um your story like oh audience is like this audience is like that or you just like you just like write and like um hopefully they enjoy it or like from book to, from book one to like book five in the series? Well, I definitely write to entertain. I'm, I'm not trying to bore anybody <laughs> or preach to anybody. I'm definitely trying to have like, you know allow readers to have a good time uh, with my weird worlds. Um, but, uh, I do, I am pretty inspiration dependent. I, I try not to be, you know, cause uh, at the end of the day, you have to sit down and write. Uh, but I am, uh, you know, I, I am driven by inspiration, um, uh, more than, you know, uh, you know, just sitting down. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, am I there? Yep, yeah, there you yeah. go. All right, let's cut off a minute. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, uh, anyway, but yeah, so I am inspiration dependent. If I get, you know, uh, in the mood to write a particular scene or a particular type of story, I'm just going to sit down and write that. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully people will enjoy it. Uh, but I, I am uh, trying to be a, an entertaining storyteller. Uh, so even if I'm writing, about zeppelins and fish people mm. it's still fun mm. uh but uh i do write about all sorts of things I've, I've written a modern horror series called the living night about vampires and werewolves etc and the modern day on a, a big epic adventure uh and i have also written an epic fantasy series called war of the black tower which harkens back very much to tolkien Okay, so in terms of like your audience, who who is your audience, and um, who what's been like the feedback from your like your your books and your series? Well, according to uh, Facebook's metrics, <laughs> which are pretty good metrics, uh, my audience is between, uh, or my 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 best audience is between like twenty five and fifty five uh, male. And uh, so that's, you know, guys, you know, roughly my own age. So I'm writing to my, my own, you writing know. Writing yourself, basically. <laughs> for, yeah, writing for myself, yeah. basically, yeah. yeah. It's always good when you're, like, writing, too. Even if, like, you don't think about it, too, when you're writing, too. I don't think as authors we think about, like, um, this type of stuff, too. We don't think about, um, oh, I'm going to, um, like, have like, a certain audience. Like, you just write for you, not for yourself. Like, at first, write for yourself, and then hopefully somebody, like, reads it and then, like, gets inspired by it. And then, like. You could like create your own like world, you know, in between that too, and then like the carry if it carries on too, so then like people actually like enjoy it and like get something from it too. So it's always good. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's good when people like your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of like, your goals now, um, the guys, are you guys in quarantine still in Texas? Yeah, uh, you know, we had been opening up, uh, but then there were a rash of new cases and. Uh, a lot of places are closing down again. There, there's new re requirements for face masks that we hadn't had to wear face masks in public, but, but now we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that has been a challenge, just, mm -hmm. you know. So in terms like of like it. your um, creativity, did it affect your creativity at all? And what are some of your present goals? Well, you know, what helps my creativity is getting out of the house and you know, stimulating my brain. Um, staring at the same four walls I don't 
feel as inspired uh, unless I'm reading a really good book that inspires me, uh, which happens. Uh, but I do like to get out, get my blood going and uh, see my friends and go to places and do stuff. And that usually fires at my brain. So when I'm not able to do that, I, I, it definitely has hampered uh, my creativity in a way. Okay, great. So what are, you, what are you working on recently? Like, what's your next project that's, that's coming up without giving it too much away? Sure. Yeah, well, I am. Uh, I just finished a new novel that is a, a sequel. It is the first novel, epic fantasy novels, uh, called The Swords of the Sun. Uh, and it is a sequel to my series, The War of the Black Tower. And uh, it features the same characters and the, the same setting, but it explores different aspects of the setting. Uh, in, a, in a different aspect of the mythology of that world. And uh, hopefully readers will have a good time at, with it. If you enjoy, you know, Lord of the Rings type fantasy, uh, I think you'll like it. Okay, great. So um, finally, um, do you have any advice for younger readers, younger writers out there and people like struggling out there? Because you have experienced both uh, publisher and self-publishing too. If you give advice on both sides of that, that'd be great. Sure, well, uh, I, I have had success uh, self-publishing, being an indie writer but I have seen a lot that, that happened. Uh, and I think there's a lot of writers that would be better served being traditionally published, especially if you're writing in a niche genre uh, that's hard to market to the Kindle audience. Uh, so, you know, you have to have your keywords, you have to have your, your, your tropes, you know, whatever. Um, that makes it a lot easier to advertise. So if you're, if you're writing something very niche or arty, uh, it would be probably to your benefit uh, to be traditionally published and have the, the might of a publishing house backing you up and advertising for you. So I would suggest for everybody to first pursue traditional publishing uh, and only go to indie publishing uh, if that doesn't work. Okay, so I'd like to end this with a positive message from you to the world out there, your audience, anything like you'd like to share? Uh, just keep writing, write, 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 uh, submit, 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 and also get feedback. Hey, okay, great. So, uh, what are your tags? People can find you at websites, Twitter, Twitter Facebook, all that. Yeah, jackconnorbooks.com. Uh, uh, Jack Connor is ER. Uh, my books, uh, again, are, you know, The Atomic Sea, War of the Black Hour, The Living Night. Uh, if you like horror, steampunk, steampunk or fantasy, uh, seek me out. Uh, hopefully, you'll have a good time. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Jack, for coming on, and thank you guys for watching. This has been episode 38 of the Countless Vlogcast. My guest author, Jack Connor. So, guys, go out and support, read his books. They, they seem awesome. So, um, thank you, Jack, again for coming on. And thank you, guys. Thank you very for much for having me. I appreciate it. All right, no problem. I'll get this video to you over to you um, for YouTube. Okay, sounds good. Okay, great. Everybody, I'm out. Thank you very much.